I just got done filming and it has been a very long morning. Um, I am ready for a cup of coffee and I think, I think I'm just gonna go to McDonald's. So I have kind of kicked the cream habit. Um, I'm usually coffee with cream, no sugar, just cream. I can remember my parents giving me a little bit of coffee when I was a kid and it was full of cream and sugar. <laughs> um, it became a comfort, you know, you just kind of get used to that thing. But I know all habits can be broken. I really wanted to kick the cream habit so that I could stick more uh, cleanly to my intermittent fasting routine, um, which I have followed for many, many years. I just had cream in my coffee in the morning. And even though they say that like a whole cream and that will not cause an insulin response, and break your fast. Um, I just felt like I really needed to make a change. But I just got done filming this one that I'm wearing here. It's lovely, absolutely lovely. This is the Dalgona 16 by Beltress. I know a lot of you are asking me about this wig um, as it was sitting back in what I like to call my audience um, for a couple of months until I could get to the review. It's absolutely gorgeous. She come out of the audience into the spotlight today. <laughs> um, I like to call it my audience back there because it kind of gets lonely, you know? I'm talking to all of you, but in reality, I'm all by myself in there. <laughs> and I work from home, so I don't, you know, I don't socialize much, which is really okay with me just because I'm an introvert anyway. I just love being at home, just me and my cat and doing my work. Um, the one thing about working from home though, is that you're always working. You can't ever leave it, you know? Um, if there's something to do, I'm back there doing it. And I really have to be aware of that when my husband needs some of my time. You know, when we want to spend some time together, I can't be running back to my office constantly. I think Beltrust fibers are just freaking amazing. Like you can't tell the difference between a Beltrust fiber and real human hair. Um, in fact, I think I like the fiber better than I do real human hair, at least my own real human hair, right? Um, just absolutely gorgeous, luxurious, worth every, I think the Beltrust styles uh, are just worth the money. Um, I think they're well-priced and I think their quality is coming up so much. There are so many things I'm noticing that, um, I'm gonna stop here and order real quick. Uh-oh. Good morning. I just need a large coffee with four cream, please. Large coffee, four cream. Is that all for you? Yep, that's it. All right, then pull around to the next one. I'll have you for the next. Okay, thank you. But I want to talk to you about my new car. So I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but I did post a couple weekends ago, I posted where I was out taking a test drive of uh, a new car. We were in a Volvo dealership. It was kind of a spur of the moment. We had been shopping for a new car for months. Like every weekend we would go and just drive. Hi. Yeah. I don't need a receipt. I don't need a receipt. Ever since I became an adult with an adult job, an adult salary, <laughs> I had Lexuses. I remember in 2001, I bought Lexus 350RX. It was very, very expensive. Um, and I basically raised my family in that car. I, I kept it until 2014. I, I raised my kids in that car. Um, not literally like every day, but you know what I'm saying. Kids are hard on cars and this car was amazing. It had all the luxury, durability that I needed. And so I became a diehard Lexus fan. I bought another uh, Lexus RX 350 in there, but it was, it was used and it wasn't quite the color that I wanted. I really wanted the white with the parchment interior and they did not have that at the time. And even though the car drove beautifully, I wasn't kind of, I wasn't just super happy with the, um, the colors and so forth. 
and so I, I decided to trade it in. Well, I did. I traded it in in 2018, and um, I bought a Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit, which is kind of the top of the line, super luxurious. I didn't know Jeeps could be that luxurious. Um, and again, I don't know what it is. I've always kept cars for a really long time, and I love that Jeep, but the way it was designed on the inside, it just made me feel like a little marble rolling around in a big box. You know, I, I, it didn't hug me in the cockpit like my Lexus did, so I wasn't quite as comfortable. So I traded it, I was gonna trade it in on another Lexus. Well, um, as it turns out, I ended up in another Jeep. Yay, Jeep! I remember posing the question on my Instagram page. Um, I said Lexus, Volvo, and Jeep because I had basically narrowed it down to those three brands. And I like an SUV. I like a like a midsize SUV. Um, and so I got lots of opinions. There's some diehard Lexus people. There's some diehard Volvo people. And there's some um, it's a Jeep thing people out there. And I fell into the Jeep camp when I laid eyes on this one. And I'm gonna try to put up some pictures of the new Jeep. Um, it's definitely a Jeep thing because the way the new Grand Cherokees are, especially when you get up to the, the higher trim, trim levels, they're super sporty on the outside, but there are tons of luxury and amenities on the inside, all for your comfort. So I ended up with this Jeep. It's a Jeep Grand Cherokee High Altitude, which is kind of a step down from the summit, but they redesigned the interior a little bit. So what they did was they brought the center dash for a little bit forward and they built up the console a little bit. So it just feels a little tighter inside. I was so happy when they did that. So I no longer feel like a little marble in a big box. <laughs> I'm getting my coffee here. So the new Jeep is beautiful. It's like a slate gray and it has some like a, a graphite uh, wheel, not a blackout completely, but it's really sporty and it has the graphite, um, all of the exterior trim and everything is done in graphite. It just has a beautiful, almost like a monochromatic look to it. And I love it because that's who I am. You know, I am a, I'm kind of tough and athletic and rugged on the outside, ready to go off road, but I do love my luxury, you know, which is obvious in my wigs, right? I love just getting in and driving. So I was happy to take you with me today to check it out. Now I need to turn down my seat because it's hot, baby. I'm burning my butt. Okay, there we go. So anyway, spring is coming. I am so excited for that. It's been quite a long winter. Um, in fact, last spring and summer was quite a long winter. <laughs> I think spring always gives us a, a renewed sense of hope, of optimism, don't you? The, something about the leaves coming out, the smell of the fresh air, all of the birds singing, um, everything you know, all the little flowers sprouting up. You know, there's a cycle of life that it's ever renewing and it's just the way of things. Um, it's hard to be, it's hard to feel negative about something when you've got all of this renewed life going on around you, don't you think? Oh, I have some really good news to share with you. So I haven't updated you a while in a while with for my son. So there's actually a video out there on all of this i did a little bit of a blog about it and again this is going on two years uh, now so anyway what they did was they would re they would do an mri on him every so often to monitor these lesions and if there were new lesions or if the lesions didn't disappear that would kind of make it more obvious to them that it was ms so the first couple of mris he had on the head uh, there was no change to these lesions and then the third one that he had uh, one of them disappeared and then the next time there was no changes again so his last MRI was just this past month and it would have been a year and a half after the accident it was all clear 
there were no lesions on the brain. So the neurologist actually released him from his care because he felt like it was just an unusual presentation of trauma, that there was no MS going on. So this was, this was just an amazing, amazing news. As a mother, uh, as a young man looking forward to the rest of his life, it, it's just a miracle. It really is a miracle. Um, now his eye, um, he had a deep surgery on his eye to, to tighten up a muscle to bring the eyes back into perfect binocular vision. They could not get it just right. Um, he will always have a little bit of double vision in some area of the field of his vision. Not, not when he's looking straight forward, he's fine. He explains that if he looks down and left, there's a little bit of double vision. So they've gotten that corrected as good as possible. So the hip, he still has a little bit of pain in the hip and they went in and they removed those big screws from the hip because they felt like that may actually be causing some of the pain. Um, but the pain is there and he still has a wee little bit of a limp. They're still working through some physical therapy. Um, so the head has cleared up. The eye is better, not perfect. The hip is better, not perfect. He's otherwise recovered. However, because of the substantial head injury that he had, and because he had a pre-existing heart condition, um, he will be discharged from the military. These things take a long time. The way I was explained it was that they have to bring him up to optimal health before they can discharge him or get a file in front of the medical board, uh, the military medical board. Um, so he's expecting that to happen probably sometime yet this year, 2021, uh, where he may be discharged. My son has really wrapped his head around that. He has come to terms with it. He's actually, in his mind, he is planning his next move based on being a civilian, you know, being outside of the military. Now, hopefully he'll walk away with a little bit of um, disability pay so that that will help him transition into the civilian world. They also have some re-education programs. Um, now my oldest son, he really likes hands-on stuff. He was a, a flight engineer for the military, which is a very elite group. Um, he's super smart, mechanically minded, not very much school minded. He always did well in school. He's super smart, uh, just doesn't prefer to sit in a classroom for the next four years. Now my youngest son is graduating with his bachelor's degree this year um, from the local university and we're super happy for him. He's he's totally different, you know. He likes, he likes classwork and things and computers and things. Um, so both of my boys are doing well and my son has a girlfriend now, the, the oldest down in Georgia, and um, so he's starting to kind of map out his future based on his current circumstances. And um, I don't think that the military life appeals to him as much now as it probably once did. So um, just continued prayers for my son Colton um, that he continues to uh, recover and find the opportunities that make him happy in life. He asked me, he says, mom, you won't be disappointed if I don't go to college. And I said, no, no, absolutely not. Your talents, um, you have to follow your passion. You have to follow your joy. That will lead you to what you're supposed to do. And so I'm just, I just couldn't be more proud of him and his accomplishments and his grace and ease in which he has digested the accident and transitioning from one dream to the next. That's not an easy thing, is it? So spring brings new things. I'm always trying to um, try new things on my channel, but still keep the integrity of the channel, you know, making it all about wigs. It's still my thing. You'll see my videos kind of peppered here and there with, um, health and beauty items as well. I think you guys know this about me. I think I've mentioned it before, but I'm just not a big makeup person. I I like to look my best and feel my best, but I 
don't like applying makeup. I mean, I do like the end result, but I don't like putting it on and taking it off. <laughs> so I'm pretty lazy about that. And you will only see me in makeup when I am shooting videos or going somewhere special. You know, if I was date night or something, maybe put on a little bit of makeup, but I rarely ever wear makeup. So many of my friends really love makeup and they're amazing at it. Um, I just have not been bitten by that bug. So, but I have been bitten by the wig bug. I think a good wig can take place of makeup. <laughs> That's just my opinion. But um, yeah, I, I'm not a, a huge makeup person, but I do enjoy health and fitness, anything that helps me. And I have been going through a perimen perimenopause period. I'll, I'll be 53. And even though I'm still cycling regularly, I'm noticing some changes and they're not good ones. Um, the biggest problem I have is insomnia. I literally have to be in bed for 10 to 12 hours just to get six hours of sleep. Um, I wake up so often and I, I become fully awake and I, I doubt that I even get a really good deep sleep in. I really do. And when you lack sleep, I think that it just, it exacerbates any anxiety, stress or pressure that you have in your everyday life. I always said to myself and to my kids when I was growing, when they were growing up, I said, a good night's sleep is the best medicine. It absolutely, it fortifies your body. It makes it uh, more resilient to stress and, and you have so much energy to, to, to go about your day. And when you can't sleep, that is very hard because I was always a pretty good sleeper, much lighter after I had my kids, but I still slept well. I could get a restful night's sleep in eight hours, but now I can't do that. And I, I find myself awake for an hour or two several times a night and you know it does me no good to sit there and try to force myself back to sleep so I'll you know I'll pull up an article I'll read something I'll watch something and then eventually go back to sleep so I'm not sure how healthy that is but I'm always looking for things to help up until now I think the biggest relief that I had I get is with melatonin a melatonin supplement. I take a melatonin supplement, five milligrams, and it's one of those that dissolve on under the tongue. And I, I take that about a half an hour before I go to bed. So um, I think that does help some. And I try to give myself a break from that occasionally. But I do have an exciting new product that I can't wait to try. And that is the Macu uh, CBD oil. My friend Monica McGillicuddy, you, Monica's Beauty and Lifestyle is her channel. I'll link it below. She has tried this product and her and her husband both absolutely love it. And they've gotten a lot of relief from things like anxiety, joint pain. Um, and Monica uses uh, CBD oil on her face. Now, CBD oil is a, a cannabinoid. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, uh, like hemp. Um, but it doesn't have any of the THC. I think that it, that's what it is. That's the psychoactive ingredient in marijuana plant. Um, so it doesn't have any effect like that. It's not like a drug effect. Um, but it does act on the receptors inside of the body to maybe deliver a little bit of relaxation. And um, these are natural things in our body that are, are ready to, to receive these kinds of, of things. So I'm really excited because this Maku CBD oil is, one of the uses for it is insomnia. And I definitely feel like I need something. And I don't like to take drugs. I don't like to take any medicines. I literally hate to take an ibuprofen for a headache or menstrual cramps. I hate taking medicine. Um, I like to live a clean lifestyle. I think it's the best for me. Um, it's the best route for me personally. And if I'm going to get through menopause as intact as possible without with as little side effects as possible. I think I really need to, to do that. I can't take hormones. Just so you know, I cannot take hormones because um, 
I couldn't even take birth control pills as a young woman because of the hormones. Um, several things happened. Anything with estrogen in it makes me nauseous every single day like I want to, like morning sickness, but all day long, every day. It was not tolerable. It messed up, it messed with my gastrointestinal tract and it gave me black patches on my face. Um, it, it's called melasma and it is a direct response to est the level of estrogen in your body. So for many reasons, I cannot take hormones and um, hormone replacement therapy is the last thing that I wanna try right now because I know I cannot digest hormones. Even the patches that are transdermal absorption will cause these things. So I'm gonna have to look for more natural things to try. Um, I know there's lots of, you know, cognitive behavioral kinds of things that you can do to relax yourself down for sleep, um, you know, meditations that you can do. And I don't think anything has really worked so far. Just when I think that, hey, maybe that worked because I had a good, better night's sleep than it reverses on me. So I don't know what's real and what's not, but I am going to try this CBD oil and I'm going to make a, a di I'm going to keep a diary of it to see how, um, how well it works. The other thing is during perimenopause, you can get these kind of these, I want to say these bouts of anxiety that come out of nowhere. It's just, you feel keyed up and you're super edgy and any little thing that happens is blown out of proportion and it seems overwhelming. Life can seem overwhelming when you have anxiety issues. Um, my whole family has more like a generalized anxiety. Um, my mom and my sister are both on medicine for it. Again, I'm not a big medicine taker and I've always been able to manage it by a healthy lifestyle. Um, exercise, diet, and that kind of thing. But as I near menopause, I do feel this bubbling up in me every uh, every once in a while. And um, the CBD oil is supposed to help that as well. So we'll see. Because if it makes me feel off, if it makes me feel like I'm detached from the world, um, I won't like it. I need to have my wits about me. Um, so we'll see. And I'm going to record all of that in a blog for you. So I've always just been a person when something sets you back in life, you get back on the, ho the horse and you keep trying. I'm a solutions person. It drives me crazy when somebody gives up because I feel like you can do this. You can find a solution to something. Everybody's different. There's, you will absolutely not get any judgment from me. I think the biggest, dam most damaging thing that we can do to ourselves is be negative thinkers. Um, you know, some people are just really attached to their negative thoughts. They may not even realize it. Um, and some people will, throughout their lives, they will latch on to a negative experience. Um, somebody hurt them or they got their, they were bruised really bad and, and it, and it, and it gave them fear. They just keep going over it and over it and over it. And, um, they relive it. They dredge it up and relive it constantly. And it could be just anything. So we have to learn how to let go of negativity and fear. Fear drives negativity. And I think a lot of these people that are constantly negative, they're getting some sort of payoff. Like, why would they do it constantly if they weren't getting a payoff? And I always thought, gosh, what would be the payoff? If you were constantly negative about everything, what could the payoff be? And I think it's the fear of losing control of your situation. And depending on your upbringing, your circumstances, your individual biology, that's you, some may be more prone to it than others. Um, I try to learn from every situation that I'm in. Oh gosh, this past year, 2020, early 2021, was one of the biggest, most challenging years in modern history for everyone. I think no person was unaffected by the events of the pandemic, of potential financial loss, of family upheaval, um, you know, death in the family, sickness, loss of income. There were just so many triggers for stress and anxiety and 
if we can overcome those things and learn to be joyous and have optimism and feel blessed in our everyday situation, no matter what it is, you can always find some blessings, something to feel positive about. Let go of the fear and the negativity. This is, this goes way beyond wigs, guys. This is, I guess I am just really putting my hope out there for the world that if we can adopt a different way of thinking, the world would be a much better place. It doesn't have anything to do with your religion um, or where you grew up or anything else that we, we're humans. We all have this capability. Um, and I wish you all well. I think, you know, from, from my perspective, things that I go through, things that I go through that I didn't even ask for, <laughs> you know, something comes out of the blue and knocks you down. If you can see the lesson in it, if you can see the lesson in it, you can put it behind you. Do your best to make your amends, see the lesson in something and then move on. Don't dwell on it. There's just not, there's just no payoff. Don't dwell on something, you know, learn their lesson and move on. And every day you get up in the morning is a new day and you have the ability to make, to make good choices. Only you. Everything in your life is a culmination of choices that you make. And that starts with one little choice every single day. And if you can choose to be positive, you can, if you can choose to be grateful, that's a good start. And just being mindful of everything that's going on around you so that you can make decisions that are healthiest for you and the others around you. We're not perfect. Um, sometimes when I haven't encountered a situation before, I don't know what to do. And I may or may not make a good decision about it, but I can learn from it and I can move on. We all can do that. Anyway, I really enjoyed this little chat with you today. It's just such a rambling little thing and I is probably terribly boring. Um, but it just feels like you're right here in the car with me. I'm at the park right now. I'm looking around. We do a lot of running on trails and there's a lot of city parks in our area, like five or six city parks. They all have like walking and running trails. And this time of the year, they're usually too soggy to run because the snow is melting and there's a lot of rainfall and so forth. And so I'm just looking at my trail. I'm really not gonna go out there and walk on it because it looks too soggy right now, but I'll be back and I'll be running these trails daily until fall until the snow falls <laughs> um it's just it's such a beautiful feeling being out in nature it's renewing it just it grounds you it's just it just really is a, a spiritual experience for me okay i'm gonna drink some more coffee and then i am going to head back we'll talk again soon love you all bye-bye